All right, welcome back to another Play and Explain. Um, got the webcam on again for the video. Um, gonna start off here. Just here, just gonna simplify and call here. Not gonna talk about it yet. Um, moving on to this hand uh, here. When he half pots, I threw a leave. We have to call here. Calling a three bet uh, open button. He three bets at twelve big ones. I called. Um, yeah, sorry about the jumping into the action right away here. Um, here on the river. The question is, we have a billion bluffs. But also, he doesn't really have to call that much worse than an ace. He's going to have a lot of ace in this line. Don't see the point in really raising him. So, yeah. Uh, just going to call here. Lock up the nuts. Here, I think a lot of his folding range here. We're going to rely on some of these clubs. X, ace, X. I'm going to check this one back and probably turn this into a bluff on the river. Okay, so here we have two choices here. I don't mind the idea of just targeting a hand that can get it called by a queen x and then hope he raises some of this jack 10 maybe slow play types hands checking twice also is viable as well so we went with half pot let's see ah instantly just punished should have considered the check jam here i think you could jam sometimes 41 i cannot see a jamming on a 41 though so i'm not gonna pay it any mind um, yeah. It's definitely a spot where you're going to have to uh, pick your hands. Uh, you're going to have to have a number of different bluffs in the spot because... Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say in practice. Like, it doesn't really matter. This is a fold. I think king six is the bottom, I believe. Uh, yeah. Regretting my other decision, um, I've kind of... Was, I, I don't know, it's just with the recording and everything. I think, like, realistically, he actually does have a lot of king x in this line. Uh, that he just knitted it up because the flush drug out there. Um, I think this you just never need to call. I think you could fold it pure. You don't even need to have it in your coverage. Um, being in position. And the 3-bit sizing being so big. I know you don't need it, uh, button versus big one. You don't need it out of position. In position, I think you could call it, actually. I think at a frequency. I could be wrong, though. It needed, like, a 90 at least, though, to consider it. For me to, uh, no. I know it's not going to call in that number, though. Your guys pull out advise for generally going with an overfolding to three bet strategy. It's usually pretty fine to play versus because even the people who three bet a lot tend to be a little too aggressive or misplay a lot of pots, in the sense that they're over c betting. So even if the guy three bet bluffs you a lot, um, he, they're probably not checking as much as they could. So having a stronger hand in general is also probably pretty fine. Um, just for the sense sense of like even if he has bluffs in his range, if he's always tripling them off, then you, you'd rather just have a stronger range anyway. Um, yeah. Um, and here, obviously, he's serving a recreational, so it's going to be good luck us here with the queens. I'm um, going to check this one back sometimes. He doesn't lead. So here, here, there's a lot of things to think about in this position. I'm going to go ahead and check it back on the number, and I'll keep explaining. Uh, he doesn't lead. In theory, if they don't have a leading range, you're supposed to see bet. I mean, if they do have a leading range, you're supposed to see bet way more often when they check. Obviously, calling off here. On this turn, I actually am going to bet it. We check a good amount back here, so we'll have some 8x. When he checks twice, he's pretty fucked. Well, it was a good river. Ooh. We got out. It's 10. Ah, that would have been cool. Uh, anyway, what I was yapping about here was if he, if you know for a fact they actually are playing leads, when they check, they are weaker, obviously, because they don't have as many strong hands. Because you're not leading everything, but you're leading more strong hands than not. So it does make your checking range a bit weaker. Um, it, and it does have a, a plus EV payoff, though. There's a reason why a leading strategy makes money on these boards. I'm going to defend the king seven. I think king six is where the break point is, I believe. going to defend the king seven there, uh, here. Assuming he's playing a normal button opening range. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the webcam and stuff. I can't tell if it's delayed or not. Sorry about the inconsistency with the uploads. I've been traveling and stuff. Looking at the webcam right now on my other monitor, I do, <laughs> it just seems laggy for some reason. I, re I recorded a video on a laptop and it wasn't as laggy. So I feel like it's my computer, not the webcam. So, yeah. So here, check, check. Yeah, big bit flop check. I don't... Uh, you're going to be blocking at a high frequency. I just don't think this hand... This is a mix here. I didn't pay attention to the number because you can almost open up here. But I think it should be about half the time. The overbet, just snap folding.
It's a weird line by him. I think, yeah, I don't know. Gonna get one more table at least of this going. I'm um, here in the spot with the ace not being a club. I think you're still gonna be betting a good amount. It doesn't make sense. I, I like the idea of betting half fall, but maybe we have to size smaller. I'll go with one third. I don't like B20. So we can do either here. Let's roll it once because it's kind of spazzing out. Sorry, I'm not looking at the current number. Let me go back. Okay, I'll take 18. Sure. I will check then. I think he's going to have a lot of pocket pairs that have to call one more. So in theory, exploitably, I don't mind betting turn here, checking and calling off. Um, depending on your player pool. I think we block. I'm going to block and call a jam. Probably could realistically though, uh, he's gonna have a lot of these pocket pairs here, like tens with the club, that uh, tens, nines, eights, that I kind of was hoping he would turn into a bluff. That's why I went with the block sizing. I don't think the block sizing is technically correct in theory. Here, my opponent's still gonna have a lot of continues here. A lot of his, uh, even though we blocked two clubs here, a lot of his uh, 10x um, hands are going to have a straight draw with them. So I don't mind the idea of just exploitably sizing up. Versus Recreation, he's probably going to call too much. Damn. I was going to post a video showing my results for this month of January. Um, but I decided not to because I don't really track it well. I was basically just going to show my poker craft on DG and let you guys assume what the rake would be. Um, obviously, hit the bad beat jackpot this month, so it was a pretty good month. Uh... At the same time, I might just uh, slowly try and improve my... Uh... Damn, I'm lagging here. I don't mind sizing up here at this end, actually. I'm slowly trying to improve the way I track my results, and then uh, start, pro start actually uploading content, because I just don't track my results very well, to be honest. I'm pretty... I play on two different computers. And uh, I didn't even have a poker tracker account, I just realized, until recently. I had the software to run a HUD and run everything, but I didn't have an account set up and stuff. <laughs> like, I don't know. I saw I have to figure that out. God, this mic delay is annoying me. On this number, it is a 3-bet. Also, versus the recreation, I would just do a pure. I would never roll 3-bets versus fish. Um, unless you're really worried about the regs behind you being really sharp and cold flooring you, and if you're doing certain things too much. But in general, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I guess we'll check and then evaluate River. At this point, I feel like I can almost check. I lose to some pocket pairs, but the size here is going to be 11, actually. And I'm going to check here. Yeah. Wow. So we have his queen like pretty much pure. He has his queen pretty much pure. So, yeah, this is going to be a spot where you play both. Not having the backdoor flush draw makes me want to bet this hand more often. Snapful kind of sucks for me. 62 we're going to open. You can consider playing limps on GG Poker because of the bad beat jackpot. Um, with hands like maybe even this one on 42. I don't know, 42 doesn't seem low enough. But um, the reason being, every pot above 30 big blinds is raked for the bad beat. So uh, the, the position on the table that you play like the least amount of bad beat uh, jackpot eligible hands is going to be the blinds, right? You basically need hands like jacks. Like 7-6 off, for example, per, uh, can never hit the bad beat. You can only hit one card straight flushes and uh, one card quads and stuff like this. So you gain, I could have I probably called when this guy was in. I kind of got punished for that. Actually, on a three, we're going to call this one. Wow, so punished. Watch this guy have threes, too. Um, to do either here, I don't mind the idea of overbet. Just the checking range seems so weak. I'm going to check, simply for the reason that he's going to have a lot of under pairs, and I want him to maybe bingo his set as well. I'm just going to bet now. I don't know. I don't know what he's checking twice here and playing in this way. I don't think he ever plays 5-4 this way, so I basically have the stone nuts. He must just have ace high. 
I'm just gonna play on a line where I rep nothing because he might be more likely to hero call me if I do. Like, yeah, obviously this is a spot where I probably should be polarized, but... Or, like, I can bet more than the pot because I have infinite number of bluffs. He hasn't thinned my ranges at all here, and uh, he's pretty capped himself. He doesn't really ever have a strong hand in this line aside from maybe a couple traps, maybe. So, he's pretty capped, so I should probably be sizing up to basically ensure that he can either never call, or when he does call, he has to have a terrible hand. Um, basically, he can go the maximum thin for value. But in reality here, I just took a line where I look like I rep nothing. I'm um, just because I think um, it's more likely to get him to uh, either check raise me or uh, uh, hero call me. I'm gonna call here. And uh, this boy definitely gonna lead, I think. This guy actually hasn't got, but he probably doesn't really deserve the Bakker tag anymore. He's pretty, he's improved a good amount. The Bakker eventually uh, in that game you uh, run out of money. I think that's what happened to him. So I'm just gonna give him the normal fish tag at this point. By the way, if someone's watching this video and you're tagged fish, I mean it's nothing ag against you. I mean I have a lot of regs tagged fish as well. It's just if you don't have a hundred big blind stack or you do something that's uh, what's it called a little out of line. You're going to get the fish tag. I mean, I don't even know how to explain it. But. Yeah. Uh, here, it's supposed to size up, but I like the idea of 3-betting more often and sizing down. When he goes to 2x, he's going to be going to 2x because this guy is a fish on the big blind, meaning I want to 3-bet him more. He's going to be opening a lot more of these lower frequency hands, slash maybe even uh, non-real opens. I'm just going to range bet this one third here. Is it a thing in theory? Probably not, but I do think... I don't know. Hmm. Good card as well. We blocked Jack 10. 10 of hearts here. I mean, I think in theory, the 10 of heart, the, the hand he's supposed to rate the least on the flop is Jack 10 of hearts. So obviously blocking that in the calling range probably is, is pretty relevant. I actually am going to just probably barrel this one through. I mean, it's an under bluff spot, and we're not going to have any better hands to do it with. Is this a pure take in theory? Probably not, but... Probably just gonna go with it. I mean, it's an under. It, the people usually don't defend this wide enough. I mean, he's gonna have ace queen. You might hear Rokali's jack, but I'd say more often than not, people tend to get a bit nitty in these types of spots. Rightfully so, though. I mean, I would overfold them as well. Um, yeah. And I think sometimes it's important for you guys to realize I think 10's there, I know for a fact it's not gonna be a pure bluff. Like, it's not like, oh, I block jack 10 on pure bluff. Because you know, you have showdown, you don't wanna only bluff with pocket 10s, right? Then your opponent, like a 10 for the, your opponent's not even a good bluff catcher anymore, etc. Uh, your opponent can just start calling two pair, like random ace x. Anyway. But the thing is here, I just know in this spot that I prefer to bluff a hand like 10s and jacks. Even if there is some like thing of having like some middling showdown hands in your checking range and stuff like this. Um, simply due to the fact that it's just like, it's a bluff I can think of off the top of my head here. I know when I get to the spot on this rainbow board, it's going to be hard to find some of these other bluffs. Like, I mean, 10 9 is pretty easy, but yeah. I just think 10s is just like gonna make the most from barreling through here in reality. In practice. Yeah. And so, plus, 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 it's good to acknowledge it's a, probably, it's a pretty much overfold spot. Like, if I know my opponent never has the nuts here, which he basically doesn't when I have Jack 10. Also, the 10 of hearts logic is for sure true here on this board as well. Um, if he is gonna bluff catch me, it's gonna be hands like Ace 10 suited, which I also. I don't really block, I guess, with the heart here, but I block once. Anyway, I'm kind of rambling, but yeah. Let me know if you guys like to see the webcam. I am going to try and be better. I don't even think it's an issue with syncing the audio. I think it's just a frame rate issue on this webcam on this computer. I'm going to have to figure it out, but I still need to get videos out for you guys. I've been doing stuff. I was going to post the results video. I think I already said that, but I decided against it, so yeah. Been recording 14 minutes now. Yeah, let me know what you guys would like to see from me. I'm willing to post almost anything if you guys want some tips, stuff like this. The only thing I'm willing to not do is I do play on a bit of a smaller pool, so I'm not willing to give away too many exploits on things that would reveal too many things that I do that make a lot of money versus people because it would just be... I don't play in a huge field, so I can't tell you guys certain exploits. I can just tell you, like, the general theoretical approach, plus, like, the general way people make mistakes. 
deviate from said thing that I'm talking about. Okay. Uh, here we go to 10. We should probably size up, but I don't mind it for the same reason. Would have been a banger flop. But yeah, also let me know the pace of the videos you guys like. Do you guys like every day? Because I noticed my results started to do a little bit worse as I posted every day, but I also care more about the actual loyal viewer. Or do you guys rather, let's say, a consistent, more improved quality of video, but once every three days? Um, just on average. Um, you know what I'm saying? Maybe more editing. Maybe it's always a better session with more interesting stuff. Maybe it's a session I'm playing better in. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people have some complaints about, like, the, the mic, the webcam, the, the overlay, the setup. But that stuff, like, at the end of the day, I make zero dollars from content. And I still have to... Uh, grind these hands out and between doing all of it it's like I do it all myself right it's not an excuse I guess but it's just it's gonna take a little bit of time I'm not someone who I consider myself that lazy but yeah hmm let's call here and check jam Ah, uh, that's just unfortunate. It took too long here. I'm gonna check, even though I think it's probably a bluff. Is there any bad tables here? Oh, this one. Oh, this one's okay. I need to leave one of them, though, so I can free up spots for my webcam. So here we unblock both. I'm definitely gonna go with the bet here. I don't mind the size. I don't like the idea of... Like, I think jam in theory makes sense. But in reality, it's just nines it calls me or something. Oh. I saved so much fucking money. Holy. I don't like his check back on the turn here. He's just getting cute. I mean, yeah, when a queen comes off, he looks like a genius. But... <sighs> I mean, maybe it's a read I'm capped. But I think this... Like, if you have East Jack, I don't mind it. But if you have ace-5, like, there's a chance I really do have a lot of... I have jacks with the heart. I have offsuit hands with the... Like, I don't know. 37 is nowhere near high enough. First the fish, I just 3-bet hands like this pure, because I just don't mind taking all the mixes close to pure. And here, I think I can bet big and call off, so I'm just going to do it. Oof. Here, I would say, like... Fish, he's gonna have hands like Jack-10, 10-9, stuff like this, like Ace-Jack that he might call. Like, in reality, this has worked pretty often, no, but I just have, I have five high, like, I don't love this bluff, but, in this line, but, because I don't think, yeah, it's obviously a joke when he calls stuff like that, and he just doesn't like money. Blocks like 10 not like, obviously it's a fish, I'm not gonna talk about blocks, but it's obviously, like, if he's calling hands like this, I'm probably just lighting money from bluffing him so that's like the uh, that's the um how do i say this that's the appeal of not betting turn with a hand like this is if your opponent's just you know he's a giga station but yeah i mean it sucks the rivers to seven right like i mean just so many other rivers oh, my poker stars opened on a 96 i still think i just call this pure we're not like deep enough where i need to start having weird ranges Oh, that one just pisses me off, man. I just hate I just hate getting hero called, to be honest. It's, like, it's one of my pet peeves. In spots where I know they overcall. Like, I think that's what it is. Like, if I get hero called, it's whatever. But in a, if it's a spot where I just know that he's going to overcall, and they, like, actually hero call even more than I expect, I'm just like, I don't even know. Going to fold this. Um, can do either here, but I think it's check evaluate. I do think it gets reopened not that often as a bluff here, but he might end up in the same spot I uh, I am, where he's just like five six or something. To be fair, eight blocks bluff, so I don't mind block betting. The thing here, actually, I will say, is it's really hard for you to like have a like get like call eight to your profitly. I don't even mind check fold. Ninety one. I'm gonna three bet this. 
Gonna defend the 6-3. To be honest, I don't know if it is off the top of my head. On a 94, we'll 3-bet this one. It's not a pure 3-bet. In theory. Oh, it looks like this one broke. Oh, I gotta wait one more hand. Gonna range bet this one. I don't think in theory it is range bet. I do think deuces is a fine bet, though. You can fold out like 3s, 4s, 5s, and still get called by worse. And here, when you have bottom pair, I think you're gonna be aggressive with it. We kind of have draws versus these uh, hands that are ahead of us. Gonna leave now. Oh, he left me. I just realized there, was I blocking this hand with the webcam? God, the production is not that good. Oh no, maybe not. No, it's good. I've only been dealt five hands. Huh. The card pairs, we kind of have like pretty trash equity now. I'm just gonna check and evaluate. For what it's worth, I mean, I do think in reality he's going to check a lot of a as played. I think people are more likely, even though in theory you could range check the sport, are more likely, let's say, as a Henley King Queen off with a club to uh, bet the flop just exploitatively. And they're, they're not playing a check call line with these types of hands. So I think in reality it's way more like obvious for someone to have a7 and just be like, eh, I'm going to check and hopefully I make some bluff money. And he just goes with this weird over bet where I just don't believe... I mean, I would call an ace here. Sometimes call. Sometimes I'll have a nine. I mean, obviously I need to call more than a nine there, but um, I don't mind taking this. I don't know in theory how often you take it, but probably not too often. But, uh, with the extra flatting fish in the the spot here, I don't mind it. Got punished. I don't know if I'm grimming this guy or not. I feel like I'm not, but... Can't really keep track. I'm just gonna play one more hand and leave. Definitely gonna be raising this board pretty aggressively here. I'll take it. I'll, I'll raise this one. Probably raise or fold here. I'll go with raise this time. I think it's over folded and I also think it's over C bet. I'm not gonna bluff the guy you called me with three high last time. Oof. This one's tough because technically it's like, okay, we wanna bluff pretty aggressively here, but then at the same time. Yeah, maybe I should have bet turn. I'm gonna check this one back for some fish. First of 130, I don't think you're supposed to fold a hand like this. Heads up. I think like you're supposed to very fold very little in position in general. You can almost simplify the range calling. So this is not a board he should be 130. He's gonna be but he's basically value betting with all these ace high types hands. But we have position. So it's harder to value bet ace high when you don't when you're out of position because all of a sudden now you're checking ace king. Or ace king's a good hand. You're checking ace ten. And it's like, okay, what's going on? Here we block buffs here. We're dominated sometimes. Obviously, it's going to be folding. Obviously, my opponent didn't, doesn't know how to play this uh, this node. I'm going to be leaving. But yeah. Just doesn't make sense to... I mean, I think you could have a small one-third range, actually. I mean, it's whatever. I mean, if you want to bet your ace-kings and stuff. I'm just assuming you're playing a one-side strategy. And a lot of time when you, when you see a high-frequency one-third, you just assume either A, they're range reading, which is wrong, or B, they're playing one-third or check. They're not playing a B75 one-third or check, which is, yeah. Gonna be calling here with the Ten of Diamonds and the Gut Shots. I don't know, this might be a fold in theory, but I'm just gonna continue. To be fair, though, most people do fire through the turn here when they raise the flop. Outside of, oof, that's a misclick. Still meant to open it, though. I don't mind 3-bidding the flop with this hand, blocking the 10 of diamonds, but... Probably want a bit more equity. Actually, actually it's okay, because you want to have some raise folds. Like, if I raise, like, jack 10 of diamonds, I have to call off. He obviously just overbets, and we're out of here. I don't mind the 3-bet, but I don't think we rolled high enough. Probably should... Probably better to 3-bet this hand, actually, than, than call it. It's probably a pretty bad call, actually, by me. Probably plays pretty well as a 3-bet, probably plays pretty bad as a call, if I had to guess. Main reason is, like, I can raise flop here, I don't mind folding versus a jam, and then if turn comes... 
and I don't get that good of a card, I can just check. As opposed to just calling folding 95% of the cards that come off. Like, I don't really like calling, I'm just wasting 5 big wins. But it's good to have some 3-bet bluffs. You're just going with the one third of the range here on the super disconnected board. People really underrate these types of textures. Um... Because it's a board you're going to have to overfold. I, I knew when I said that I manifested a raise. It's a board you're going to have to overfold. And that's the big blind. Meaning that you should raise more often when you call. Because your calling range is naturally going to be stronger on average. Meaning you might as well just play a small raising range. And actually deny some of these equity from my hands and stuff like that. That's like the idea. <sighs> you basically turn into a big better check defense. <laughs> I guess is the way to explain it. But instead you're the one raising. It's kind of, I don't know. I mean, you, you, you still need to have a calling range or something, but... I um, can do either here. I would say, I don't mind raising. I mean, you get cooler by 6-7. Fold up better ASX and stuff. We'll just go with the raise here. Not to mention, the one third here does seem pretty weak. And we're going to be checking range on this flop. So, we're going to be able to check raise it pretty aggressively. We are versus recreational, which is something to watch out for, but... I don't mind it. This guy's shown some ability to play the game. I'll just play him a little more standard now. Cut myself shaving. Real mature guy I am. Sorry if I'm always looking over here. I'm just looking at the webcam and stuff. It's really bothering me that it's not syncing that good. Interested to see the quality of the video. But yeah. Uh, I closed it, so I stopped looking over there. I, I, I sometimes have these like ticks when I record and stuff. Oops. I might have to cut that out. I don't think I showed anything. But... Um... Here's a similar to this fold. The ace of diamonds, though. We're just going to naturally get less folds when you raise this type of hand. I don't mind calling hands like this. Like, you feel like you have to call ace size where I'm blocking the middling portion. And you know what, man? I'm just going to raise. This is a good hand to raise. I don't care. I'm doing it. Uh, the ace of diamonds sold me. The, re the main reason why is it's hard to have bluffs. Unless you're a bluff, you're going to want to contain an ace. Uh, because that's actually gonna wanna, wanna, going to be one of the higher equity draws here. Like you see here, we would have beat King Queen, we would have beat King Jack, we'd be, we would have beat King uh, King Ten. Uh, yeah. And the reason why I don't mind the Ace of Diamonds, we block A Seven, which is some, well, gonna be some of this more common A Six anyway. So even though we're unblocking some of these like backdoor continue hands, it's like whatever, man. I expect that spot to be overfolded. Plus for the video, I was just like, you know what, I was in one of those moods, I just had a feeling like, I was like, fuck this guy. Okay, here we have a great bluff catcher, so, we're gonna call, block two pair, block a straight. Can do either here, gonna check though. Uh, keeping some of his 10 and then we dominate, I kind of like the idea of it. The 10's always pretty clean, because we have the 10 of diamonds, meaning that if he has, like, king 10, we're not going to worry about it. Like, we're actually going to make a good amount of money. And uh, here we can block or check. Probably just check. And then river evaluate. I will say this is a pretty underbluff spot, because people just expect people to call my hands pure. In reality, you either ha you have to actually have the skill, assuming your opponent actually knows what they're doing, to... Uh, know what a size you're supposed to call and which what you're not to what you are not supposed to call but i'd say very rarely are people that balance in the spot obviously gonna be checking back here like yeah my hands like this and stuff i don't know because you're put you need to have bluffs here like i am pretty capped it would be kind of crazy not to because then i can just start pure folding these high and then it's like okay you're just never making any money because my, my hand is pretty face up by the river but yeah Obviously made up. I, I'll probably have aces in there every now and then. Because aces here probably make more money from just checking. And uh, getting bluffed into. Slash betting the river for value if your opponent hits a pair. Yeah. Because it's like, what are, you really get, what are you really getting value from here when you have aces? And aces check back the flop a decent amount. Sorry if my voice is cracking. I've been recording 29 minutes here. Alright, this spot we can do either. I mean, he's just shorter. If we were deeper, I would consider checking. Versus the short stack, we're just gonna bet. Okay, so I bet a third here. The pot's gonna be 15 big points. He's gonna have 11. We'll 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 go like to like. We'll just bet half pot. I don't know. Probably too big. 
I'm trying to think about, like, keeping some of these weirder hands in. But I don't mind the idea of, like, folding out some Ace High. Like, I mean, it's obviously whatever, but we'll actually get... We'll get cooler by Ace High every now and then. I mean, obviously we're in position, so we don't necessarily lose our stack when we get cooler, but yeah. But yeah, let me know what type of content you guys would like to see. Um, I really appreciate all you guys commenting on all my videos. If you're curious about the overlay software, I use the link is in the description. Um, for changing my tables, for my RNG. Um, it's free for everyone who plays micro stakes. And when you move up in stakes and eventually purchase something, um, it'll be 10% off the fact that you signed up with the, the link. Hopefully the fish defends here slash 3-bets me. On an 80 here, we're going to 3-bet. DS4. Okay, and here I'm just going to go massive. I mean... Yeah, like if he has trash when he went that massive, he has trash. I'm gonna go small all three streets here because I don't think fish want to fold to a small size. We already saw him station me once. If he jams here, we feel kind of weird. We obviously lose to a lot of random fish hands here. But we're just gonna keep betting small and hope the run out doesn't absolutely fuck me. Kind of sucks here. But given that he didn't donk, I'm just gonna go thin. We saw him station earlier. We have to get called by worse half the time. Um. Yeah. He's thinking. I mean, is he really thinking with two pair here? Um, in this spot. Why is it like glowing? Like, we have a shit straight. I'm just gonna fold. It almost threw me off because I'm playing too many tables. Like, normally, when you get the glowing image and they like bet into you, you're just gonna call. Okay, the river killed my action. Maybe if I shove turn. Probably should just shove turn. Because if he's really not folding a pair, like, why would I do anything else besides shove turn, right? Yeah, I probably cost myself money. I was just thinking in my head that, like... Yeah, I probably wish I shoved turn. I mean, obviously I do in hindsight. But if I shoved turn and get the fold, I would have been like, what am I doing? But I, I think it makes sense. Like, this guy's clearly stationing his ass off. Like, if he has a jack or a nine, or even a seven, or, like, pocket fives, he might just call a jam. But uh, when, like, a ten eight comes off, a queen comes off, he's going to be more likely to fold these types of hands. The only brick is really a board pairing card, and that might be the card he has, and he coolers me on anyway. So it's like, yeah, probably should just shove. Pricing in too many hands to call me, basically, by going nut size on the turn. In theory, I don't mind it, but. Versus the recreational. Hmm. But... <sighs> Thirty-three minutes in. So yeah, I'm gonna be back to uh, posting close to every day. I'm gonna be playing so much from up till now till Valentine's Day at least. Um, the next two weeks. Um, so yeah. Hopefully, I can put some good content out for you guys. I've been kind of slacking on my studying and stuff, so my videos have dropped in quality since then. And I kind of feel bad about it. It's just new for me to actually like be recording videos. Well, it's not new for me to recording, but to have so much focus on my game, slash my results, slash... I don't, I don't post my results, but... It's just all weird. Because I don't really do things as professionally as I wish I did. And now that I'm, like, public, I kind of feel a little off about it. Or embarrassed about it, I don't know. I'm fearful here. 7-5. But I will say, your guys' support is definitely what keeps me going. Like, every time I'm like, ah, I'm just not gonna post for a while, and someone says, like really love your videos, watch them every day or something. Like, it just makes me want to post a video for you guys. So, yeah. I will say I really appreciate those comments. I love them, for sure. Because for me, that's basically what I do it for. Obviously, it's, like, fun to look at your views going up and stuff, but it becomes, like, a little toxic in the sense of, like, this doesn't mean you're posting the best videos and etc. Also, like, my target audience is, like, a very niche percentage of people i'm never gonna be like super big or anything um here you could probably three better but i'm just going to this guy's crazy this guy's a fish i'm just gonna call don't see himself full don't see him folding off the stack with the low pfr i'm gonna check twice probably call once here 
Unless you pots it. No problem. 93 here. Going to open. Sometimes limping this in. Never limping the suited version. Because you don't really need it in your limping range. For the coverage. Oh, uh, just gonna... Okay, so keep it. This guy... I'm gonna call. My mindset is, is I think this guy might be full of it. And I think this guy might just be calling something really weak. Oof. We got bingoed. I was kind of right with my read. Okay, so where's this psychopath? I'm gonna bet here and fold to a gem. And on the river here, I just expect him to be weaker. I'm gonna bet fold still. It's my plan. Wow, this guy's just absurd. That's a perfect example of, let's say earlier, I made the mistake of bluffing this guy, right? So you guys saw it earlier where I made the mistake of bluffing this player um, when he obviously called the hand that if I knew he was going to call we can't, calling hands like that, I probably would just fold, right? Um, I call here just because he's crazy. I'm just going to check. Probably pots it now. Oh, going to check again. And I'm probably just going to take my showdown. I don't see a fish folding ace high here. I might just hope he has again the queen jack. Okay, sick. Gonna call here. I don't think it's a call in this number, but my call. He sized a little down. So it's a mistake, but whatever. Um, I can't give you guys all my reads on this pool and stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, folding versus the B75. Anyway, what was I saying? Okay, earlier I made the mistake of uh, uh, bluffing the guy who called way too wide, right? Well, now, earlier, I make basically the money back in the same node, or more. I make more back, I believe. In the same type of node, because he calls too wide. Like, obviously, I have my bluffs here. I'm going to have a 10 block zero value. Because um, he's calling too wide. So, in reality, like, that's how, like, people say, like, oh, like, GTO can't beat fish or whatever, right? I mean, obviously true. Like, like now I know something about this guy. I'm just going to not bluff him, really, in a big spot. But... And at the end of the day, like, you just make money versus these bad players, is what I'm trying to say. People act like, because, oh, he calls so much, and you bluffed him, you lose. Like, no. That's not how it works. He's doing the opposite by, if my bluffs here have a 10, and he's calling, and my value here doesn't have a 10, and he's calling. Well, guess what? Now I'm going to have more values than bluffs when I pick that size versus him. Uh, not to mention, he's just doing crazy stuff in general. That's, like, really easy to catch on to and notice. So, yeah. That's my, that's my take on some GTO versus exploitative stuff. I do think if you have the mindset that you're just going to become a GTO god and play pure GTO and win, then you're 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 kind of leaving a lot of money on the table. Um, but that being said, if you're not if you're doing the if you're doing I'm going to call here because I don't believe in the small size. And I'm going to raise here because I don't believe in the small size. This one's close. I'm going to check. This guy's crazy. Oof. Small size was... I mean, the jam might have worked. It might not have. He got me on the turn. Nine would have been sick. But yeah, my take on GT over exploitative is if you're playing poker for a living online and you're not learning about theory, you're doing it wrong. That's Assuming you're, like, you're trying to get into it, actually doing it for a living or as a really profitable hobby. And I mean, there's just no upside to not knowing theory. In my opinion. You can exploit all you want. I mean, half the pool you're playing versus is playing with theory. So, why would you not at least try and know what they're doing? It doesn't make any sense to me. It just seems lazy. I mean, yeah, you don't need to become a GTO. Everyone acts like, oh, you need to become some bot. It's just learning about the game. I mean, obviously in live poker, like, the dynamic's different. But you just need to know the why. You don't need to... I don't know. The sooner you start thinking about poker in the right way, the sooner you can just deviate in any way. I mean... Like, even his core is, like, in a whaley game. Like, if this guy starts opening 5x and he's terrible, what does that mean for me? You know what I'm saying? Like, even then, maybe you're not using GTO, but you're, you you got to be thinking about theoretically, like, how the other rigs behind you are playing, how everything reacts. And if, if you're actually thinking about the game in, in, like, an online poker way, like, I feel like you can just do better in that type of game environment anyway. It also teaches you about frequencies. 
the sense of, okay, so if I never have a straight on this run, what does it do for me? Well, now you start playing live poker and you know, for example, I play versus this certain fish. I know this guy never has a straight here or something. Like I can start going 20x if I want. You know what I'm saying? It's It, it just changes the way you play. Doesn't mean you need to, because obviously everyone talks about like, computers learning how to play. Uh, playing versus a computer is like all the sims are obviously mirrored, right? Like if you're playing versus a solver and you chirp one thing, it's gonna have like an optimal response, and your opponents are making mistakes. But I mean, you can just learn how to deviate from the space without even node locking. You can just clearly understand why. I'm just gonna check here. Have some spades in my checking range. This is a pretty terrible queen. Anyway, I was kind of rambling there, but. And here I'm just gonna have to call. I mean, whatever. Nice M. Sucks. <sighs> anyway, I was kind of rambling. But anyway, my point was there's no upside to not knowing theory. And I was just listing examples as to the benefits of knowing it. I could have called here with the fish in the big, but decided against it. Damn, that would have been a great spot for me. Put the fish in the bay, I'm gonna open this. He's gonna be calling more than 3-betting. And, uh, yeah. When you get 3-bet a lot less from the small blind, it's gonna be pretty good. This is, uh, I think, a mistake, the sizing choice here. Uh, for the exact same reason, especially exploitably. Like, if he knows I'm opening 9-7... So you might say, oh, like, he has a reason for doing that. I mean, the reason's wrong, because I'm opening 9-7. So, yeah. Second of all, the reason the sizing's wrong is when he calls, he's pretty capped. He has position on him. And when I open, like, you're going to want to 3-bet more than call, so you don't need to be as polar. The reason you size up from these spots is because you're polarizing, um, especially in the big blind. And you can start sizing down because you're going to want to 3-bet more often because it becomes more profitable to 3-bet as opposed to calling. Like, if you have queen-jack suited now... Heads up in a pot. Oh, if you get 4-bet, you have to full queen-jack suited. That's kind of awkward. Well, now you have queen-jack suited. It's like, now I'm calling three ways. Do I want to call queen-jack suited three ways? Probably not. I'll just 3-bet and try and take the pot down. I win way more now when they fold. That's like the idea. So you want to 3-bet more often. Meaning you size down. Not to mention your opponent's opening 9-7 off now because there's a fish. Um, I'm just going to fold here to sleep at night. Yeah. Turn's just going to... The river's going to be too bad. And if he's committed to bluffing, he might follow through. And not to mention, he's going to have outs even if I'm ahead of him. Even though I do think he might be overstabbing, it's just not... I don't mind the lead here, fuck it. This guy doesn't really bluff here. I still want to call, because I'm a dumbass degenerate. Do I think it's profitable? Maybe not. I'm just going to go thin here. Wow, the one-third. I think I jam. The one-third's weak. He folds sometimes. When he calls, I probably have, like, around 33%. Yeah. The issue is he's going to have a lot of hands, like, 7, 8, maybe 9, 8. And then he's just going to flick it in, and then I'm going to be so fucked. I'm just going to fold here. I just don't think he's going to bluff me in that spot. Nice job, me. Probably run some hands for you guys. A lot of these hands today have been versus recreationals. I hope I made some good points for you guys, though. I don't want to call off. I'm going to 7. Because I can't call versus a jam. I definitely want to 3-bet. Going to be wrapping it up in a sec here. Going to play two hands of heads up versus this guy. Um, this is basically a pure 3-bet. I'm um, going to be calling here. First the half plot. Turn double gutted. I'm just going to bet a normal size here. I don't know how often they still play an ace. I don't see the point of, like, polarizing. I don't think he folds an ace if he has one. He might flick in a jack if he has one. Um, but in general, I think I'm trying to get him off, like, random bullshit. The thing about out of position is it's actually okay to fold that hands that beat you compared to in position. Like, here, if he has king-10, he might bluff, like, uh, what's it called? Here, if he has, sorry, like... 5-3. I don't know. Let's pick some fish hand. I just saw a hand that didn't have a pair. Okay, so give me a sec. If he has a hand like 5-3, queen 9, right? He's going to bluff river with these types of hands. I'm going to have to fold. 
So if I if I bluff the river with this type of hand and get a fold, I don't I don't really care. I'm pretty happy about it. Compared to in position, you kind of want to be like, okay, this is the bottom of my range. This is yeah yeah yeah. It's a little bit of a difference there. Because there's some spots where your just opponent never checks back a hand that doesn't beat a certain hand. They always bluff it. And in those spots, it's okay for you to bluff their bluffs if that makes sense. Uh, big better check. I'm just gonna check this one. Uh, here, I'll just go for the check raise. I like having the six. I like having the assist bids. Obviously, it's a, probably a mix when they bet, but I would pay attention to his size. Yeah. I think this guy's closer to a fish, though, so I probably shouldn't. When he sizes above half body, he's probably continuing, so I should probably be a little more careful. Yeah, now I really hate the turn bet. He did think for a long time, though. So, I am going to follow through. Eh, it's pretty close. I would say, in theory, let's look at the theory as opposed to just what the hell I'm doing in practice. I'm just looking into a timing tail on the fish here. I'm probably wrong. Um, in practice, the 6 here, the, he's going to be folding hands on the turn, like 6-4. 6-7. Will the fish fold him? No. But in theory, the 6 of clubs is pretty bad. 8-6 of clubs. It's going to be a fold on the turn here for even more reasons than that. So, just not good to have the 6. Also, not to mention, it's not even an over to the 8. So, if you bluff catch me and I hit a 6 on the river and it goes check, check, it's like I lose. Even though I hit my kickers. If I had ace-10, that would never happen. Uh, yeah. Or, or ace-4, you have a gut shot. Ace-3. You know what I'm saying? Uh, This guy's kind of crazy. I'll just call, because, I don't know. Do I think it's profitable? Probably not off that stack depth, but I think he's going to be like checking these flops and stuff like this, meaning my positional advantage is going to give me more money. I'm going to check, obviously. And uh, if he bets now, it's jam. And Good luck, us. I feel like we might get bluff caught here, because my line makes no sense, and I think this guy, if he has a pair, is not going to believe me, and fair enough. So that's why I don't mind calling. But I also think there's something to be said about his block bet being like extremely weak. Yeah, I probably could lead here and then just fold to a jam. Oh, it's not. Anyway, we recorded for 48 minutes. Jeez, this might be an hour long video. I don't know, we'll see what I edit out or not. Uh, how bad the mic is and everything. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys would like to see. If you want a video of my G my poker craft um, or anything like this. Uh, if you like the YouTube shorts I post. That's mainly for just growing the channel. It's less so for like, the dedicated viewers. Um, I was thinking about making a Discord stuff. I've unlocked monetization on my channel now. So I could do some like... I don't really... I'm, I'm not too motivated by like charging people. I mean, I play poker for a living. I mean, like obviously at some point like I'm willing to do stuff but right now it just seems like i'm just mainly posting content like if i make a hundred bucks it doesn't really move the needle for me so i'd rather just not bother doing something like that i guess if that makes sense but anyway i'm kind of rambling right now thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video